Okay, so what you can remember from last time is I was finishing off the underside of the shell. I've finished this now. You can see it here. I'm quite pleased with it actually. It looks quite real. Uh, as I said though, if you zoom in, it just looks like a bunch of uh, brush strokes. But if you zoom out, bam, there you go. You've got a nice tortoise shell. Okay, so what I said I was going to do after this is to actually paint the bike, leave the rest of the tortoise for now, and move on to the bike. So what I've done is I've actually, I said this tricycle that I found in 3D uh, warehouse is actually a real tricycle, and I actually found a reference picture. You might hear me slurping every so often, I'm drinking tea at the moment. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to do this nice chroming effect and things on the bike. Okay, so the complications of the bike are, is part of it actually pass, well it's actually basically in between the front part of the uh, toy toys and the back part. So what we're going to do is try to figure out where to put it, the best place to have it so we can actually do the uh, correct build and everything. Right, what I'm going to do though is to quickly not sure what that is. No, that's the top part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group these two because they're the two shell parts. Make a shell. If I can close that, you'll see. No, it's not the arm, isn't it? That's the shell. Anyway, never mind. And that's uh, I'll group that as well. And I'll just call it shell. Under shell. We'll call it under shell. Like so. Right, so what we need to do is to put the, the bike basically in between those. So what we're going to do is put it there. And then the upper arm and the upper leg can sit over the top of it. And then we'll be complete then. So what I'm going to do is zoom in. So it's really nice red colour, this bike. Uh, what you've got to do is find a middle tone for the bike colour. Because you'll be doing the shadows and the highlights to make it look really wow. Uh, so I'm going to choose a colour around about there, that looks like a nice mid-tone. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just to zoom in. you notice there's this plastic part on the top part here as well, which is a different kind of red, so I'm going to do that separately later. So what I'm going to do is fill in all the red parts, which is quite easy next to what we're going to do with the actual toy toys, because uh, there's just lots of straight lines, for instance. So let's just complete that into 100%. So, this shouldn't take too long, it's not as difficult or complicated as the, uh, the toy toys, because obviously it's simple uh, highlighting shadow really. Uh, so this video should be a little bit shorter or I may even be able to get the whole of the bike done. What I want to show you is how to do the red framework. How to do, you'll notice on the, let me just show you while I'm talking. You notice you've got this really nice chromed uh, top part there. I want to show you how to do that. Uh, and also a wheel. And if I can get that done at least, I can then fill in the rest later. Because uh, they're the three main things that have any differences on this part of the painting. that done. Now there's a little line there in between, you'll notice it's kind of got those beigey colour so what I'm going to do is jump. So you can't see that on here. I'm going to have to actually draw it in by hand. I'm going to say it's about there. This will just give enough to give it some personality as well because when you do these kind of pictures as well, you want to kind of give the inanimate objects a bit of personality as well, and that can happen through colour, and as I said, the dimensions of the posturing of the actual objects. Uh, I did a really nice one of uh, a lobster 
holding an old Bakelite phone and it was quite nice. It took me ages to find a nice reference picture of a Bakelite phone. Uh, but I found one eventually and I actually then redrew it by hand in a nice angled posture to also give it some character as well and the whole picture came it's one of my favourites I did actually uh, so you can look that up if you want to it's called Calling Salvador uh, based on the idea that Salvador Dali did a sculpture of a phone, old phone and they used the lobster as the handset part and I did a reversal of that and actually did the uh, lobster using a, a phone which I thought was quite funny. Uh, whether anyone else did, I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to build that bit in. We may actually do some extra work here because I can't see the photograph of them painting. It may be silver or uh, steel, stainless steel or something, or it may be or chromed even. So I'll have to wait until I actually start painting that section to understand how it works. But we'll just do the main block colour first. Okay, and then again the petals are probably a slightly different tone of this red, so I'm not going to do those either. You notice I don't mind about going over the foot because obviously that's going to be in the foreground. So I've still got that to do. Again with the wheels, this wheel is going to be in the foreground, so it doesn't matter if I go over the line, like so. This is where zooming in can help. Okay, there isn't that much of the actual bike when you think of it, because obviously the bike's just a frame, so there's no body to it in any sense, so it's quite easy to flesh out. One of the nice things about some of the pictures I've done, I've got a lion on, and a, actually it's a lion and a tiger on separate pictures, both on Lambrettas. And if you do the Lambretta look nice enough, you can see how people appreciate the picture because they actually see it's like a photogenic or photorealistic image of the bike. So they actually appreciate the picture more because of the amount of detailing. That's the strange thing about these uh, certain objects that you use. It can fool the eye even more than just having a plain illustrated animal which can probably fall under some scrutiny. Whereas with a shiny object, like especially this bike, its facets and edges and shapes are quite simple. So to make it look more realistic is quite simple, more simple a task than actually trying to make the toy toys look real, if you can understand what I mean. Okay, so anyway, we'll come to the end of the block painting. That's what I call it, blocking in. And we'll just move into one section of the metalwork to show you how it's done. You'll probably find that this bike's got a ridge stepping effect on this uh, back plate. It's going to be a little bit of a nightmare if it has. Yep, there you see. <laughs> anyway, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put the brand name into it. Okay, I could put in Radio Flyer because it's well, actually is that the name of the brand? I don't know. Uh, I could put that in. I'll show you how to do that quite easily actually. So I'm going to do first. I'm going to zoom in on this section and paint it in. So what I do is like I normally do is I'm going to get the section and mask it, and I'm going to just drag it down so I can see it in close up next to the actual object. Now, because this is a got an object with sharp object, uh, sharp edges, I can actually literally mask it off. I don't have to worry about the edges. I've hidden the edges now, 
Uh, so I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I get the, the right. Uh, did you see that? There's a slight. There was a slight difference. If I just select that and then select that, you get a very slight difference on the colour. Uh, so when you actually start doing, notice as well, there's quite a lot of shading all the way to that edge. It's got some little flicks of highlight in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I've got blend on. It's about 80 again. But you, you don't need so much uh, natural blend because it basically has sharp edges, the highlighting, even if it's a very slightly diffused. Okay, so what I can do here is do this just to make some parts of it. You see there's a very slight difference every time I do something. This is why sampling is so important. And down here it's a little bit darker than the upper bit. Okay, that probably blends into that part even as well. Now that's probably even lighter than the section that I just made. Like so. And then there's going to be a very slight softness to that edge. All right now, this is going to be lighter again. Because obviously it's in the front part of the bike. And that's just a, a stepped element of uh, gradient. I tend to, I would like, as well I should say, you know, you could, I could do this with a gradient because it's just like there to there, it's straight. But it looks too mechanical next to the rest of the picture so I'd rather create something that looks totally hand painted because it is totally hand painted uh, and not feel I've cheated anybody and that's one of the reasons I actually do this kind of process and go through the tediousness of actually hand painting everything in the picture. There are a few occasions, very rarely though, that I will do some mechanicalized process like a, a layer effect or something it's because it's I might say it's cheating it's not cheating but it's uh, it doesn't make it look natural uh, in certain parts of the process you'll notice here you've got to be careful now because this is where certain colors start having darker colors like there there's a kind of a darker section there and you'll notice as well this is where the referencing becomes more important than the actual animal. You can give and take a little bit with the animal, but when you're doing something like chroming effect or something like that, you have to almost get it perfect, else people go, that doesn't look very nice. Okay, so it's very hard to, oops, I've got to do that. These little flicks you see here, you need to do them after you've completed all the, all the dark areas you want to do. Actually, I should take off that from now. Okay, so let's say that's what we're going to end up doing. I'm just going to do that as well. No, let's start. Oh, there's a little thing underneath the rim that I want to add. Like so, now, what we're going to do here, you see there's a very definite I like there, and then there's a softer one. This is to do with pressures. I didn't change colour, you notice, but it's gone slightly lighter than the one above it. That's because I'm using the pressure of the pen. Like so. You'll notice there's another slight edge there. Okay, and down here, it's probably a different colour. You can see. So what we're going to do is just grab that little bit of colour there. And that dark bit's not the same as that bit, it's actually in the part of it's the uh, chromed section, so we'll do that separately when we do the chrome. Okay, like that. I'm just going to give that a little bit of highlight there and then blend it like so. And just to be Finicky. I'm going to do a little bit of blended stuff there, just give it a touch of highlight. Now, there's a little bit of highlight there, a little bit going down there. And so, let's see. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this logo as part of the video. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll come back and I'll ha I will have this done. Uh, what I tend to do with a logo, now you notice on this occasion the logo is actually in a different position than I want it to be. The magic of uh, Photoshop allows you to copy. If I paste that out. And do I'll go copy the bike, copy. All right, so I've copied the section I want. What I'm going to do is literally uh, rotate it so it's on the same axis. Zoom it up a little bit so it's roughly the same size, which is about there. Now that's still wrong. So what you can do is, if I right click, there's this thing called warp. Okay, so what I can do now is I can play with this so it places the kind of the logo it's not going to be exactly the same but I don't think people are gonna look <laughs> look at the front of it and say it's not it's not this exactly the right you know uh, which is a nice thing I think it's probably a little bit flatter really okay so once you've got the logo in the right place, I'm not going to use the logo, I'm just going to use it as a reference. So what I know you need to do now is I, I'll i bring that in front of there and then I'm going to drop the opacity down so you can just see it. And then underneath, I'll do another layer. And what I can do now is quite cleverly select the colour. This needs to be at 400 because you need to have it as a solid colour. And if I zoom in, I'm literally going to oh, I need to make sure I've got the because I took it off when I copied and moved it. Right. I'm putting it on a different layer just in case sometime in the future there may be some issue with branding and someone tries to tell me not to use that logo or something. This has happened in the past with Volkswagen. So what I'm going to try and do is just to have it separate so at any given moment I can just take it off and re-output the, the file. So, Drink my tea before it gets cold, and then I'm gonna just do that and then have another slurp of tea. Got the wrong brush for the eraser. Oops, <laughs> you know what I did? I accidentally uh, put it onto the red surface. So, what I'm gonna have to do is go all the way back. With my, oh, it doesn't allow me to go back far enough. Ah, you see that's one of them. I did start painting on that, though. You see. Oh well, let's just take that off. You see, this is a thing that happens. Sometimes you make a complete gaff of things, and you have to patch it all back together. way it was. So don't worry I've done this many times, especially on my uh, caricatures I've had to re-jig parts of the picture after something's happened. Like I've expanded the canvas and then there's stripes on his t-shirt or something and they don't match. You have to re-figure how to blend that all back together again. And it's, it's, it can be a pain in the ass but at the end of the day that's the wonderful thing about digital painting is you can do all this kind of stuff that 
allows you to correct things. Okay, so you wouldn't know that there is a very slight visible indication of that, but anyway, I'm going to put it back, and that's. Huh, you see, I've done that on the wrong layer again. So, what I'm going to do is I'm, now I've got a new layer. Okay, so I've got that up. It's a pretty good thing I showed you that because you know, I haven't made any mistakes on the rest of the video, so <laughs> just showing you what happens when you make a mistake. All right. So what you've got to do is make sure you've got this logo, as I said, on a separate layer. I'll show you now. So if there's any problems with it, you can just take it off. Okay. It doesn't matter too much about this uh, uh, ellipse I'm doing. I could actually keep... I didn't have my T, did I? Now yeah, I could keep the ellipse. What the issue is was with the text. The funny thing is, because you can't see the whole of that text, then I could keep that as well, actually, because it's not illegal. It's only when you see the whole logo. You'll notice, I don't know why this is because of the effect of the photography, but there is a very slight dark edge to the, the text. It's kind of like a darkening, light dark red. Now, it probably would be easy to quickly do that with uh, a layer effect, just use outer glow instead of glowing it make it a dark version let's see if I can do that after I finish I can't see it too well on here let's see if I can see it on the I just want to show you now you see there's a blacking edge to it okay so what we can do is to try to emulate that if it doesn't work with the layer effect I'll have to do it by hand but I'll do that later Somebody might be watching this and saying, oh, I know a really easy way of doing that. I'm sure there is an easy way. You could just find the font or find a similar font if you're not too worried about the actual uh, authenticity of the actual design. Uh, you could probably manipulate it in Photoshop using that warp option and just bam it in and you could probably have it done within 10 minutes. Uh, but I tend to see myself as a craftsman and I want to push myself to a point where I understand that I can do this artwork almost to the same effect as, as it is in the original uh, version. So to me, making this look as real as the original logo by hand is more important than then trying to fake it with some simple... Uh, trickery uh, using Photoshop. Photoshop's very good at certain things, uh, but I really, really like. Uh, you see, there, I can't see the whole text. I don't know what it actually says. Can't even see there. So, what you have to do there is just fake it so it just looks like roughly the words that have been put. I don't think anybody really cares too much that it says anything. And maybe from a distance, like I showed you with the uh, the skin textures and everything, it will actually uh, perceive, be perceived by the eye as a, 
actually text you know your brain's going to say well that's text because it's what you expect so your brain and I see text even though you can't read what it says so when you see a, uh, a sign from a long way away you know eventually when you get close enough to it it's going to actually be text your brain doesn't say oh that's a big blurry mess they say oh let's uh, assume that's text because it's what we expect on a signpost and so when you get there you know it's text uh, I think it's the same with this your brain's going to say to you you know, it's a logo with some text around the rim, so you, your brain basically perceives, even though you can't ever see what it says, that that's text that's there. Which is good, because that's how you, art basically tricks people. Uh, the perception of vision, it's called. Uh, I think I mentioned it before in the first video. You know, you, this guy called Sickett, I'm going to keep mentioning his name. Yeah. Going to force you to go and see his work, I suppose. Uh, if you want to look at Sickert's work, he, he does very simple brush strokes, and uh, it's the perception of vision from a distance that makes you take them in as what they are. Like I said about this matchbox that I saw at the portrait gallery, it doesn't look like a matchbox if you go right close up to it, it looks like three brush strokes. But amazingly, when you step back, um, because he's got a cigar, I mean a pipe or something in his hand, I can't remember, on his portrait, then you just assume that's what the object is on the table. And that's the great thing about it. So, that's the logo almost finished. Let's see. Uh, Now, saying that, it may not be totally finished because of the way it's lit from the front, there may be certain sections of it in shadow and darker areas. So what I can do is I can mask that. You'll notice there, for instance, it's a little bit darker. So I can just bring that in. I'm going to just darken it there. I think at the top it's a little bit darker, but overall that's correct. So I'm quite happy with that. As you, as I said before, there's this outer rim which isn't apparent on mine. So I'm going to deselect it and see if I can fake that with a outer glow. As outer glow, obviously it comes in. What you want to do is put it on multiply. I'm going to choose. Sorry, if you select the colour. Okay, like so. Uh, bring the opacity up. As soon as you bring the opacity up, you see how thick it is, so you need to drop it down a little bit. Let's put it all the way up to 100. Like so. It just gives you that same look and feel. It's not exactly the same, but you don't need to work. I can actually change this by hand, so I'm going to put 10 in. That's too much, you see. So I'm going to knock that back down to 8. I'm going to drop that up to 7, see if that works. No, that's even. So it's 6. I don't think you can do points. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Okay, everything's. I don't know, you can put some noise in to make it look more gritty. Don't seem to do anything. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Once I've done that, I can actually uh, apply it so I can rasterize this layer style. So, oops, it disappears. It usually does that, but sometimes you can't do that. So, what you can do is just make it separate second layer. It's gone again. Why did it disappear? Hmm. It's because it's got a. Doesn't matter, we'll keep it there. Uh, even if I make it into a smart object, I'm sure it's going to disappear. Yeah, every time I do something, when you've got it on multiply, I don't know why it disappears. Let's see if I can keep it, if we keep it on normal. 
What we're going to have to do now though is to make a darker colour so you can see it. And let's see if that works. See if I can rasterize that. You see, that stays. If you, if you use multiply, it disappears. That's something here that uh, Photoshop needs to work out and, and figure. Good old Adobe. So what it is about multiply makes it disappear. Anyway, that's that first part complete. Like so. I'm happy with that. Let's move out and see what it looks like from a distance. I can't really see it. So. Uh, it's quite secondary as well. Most people are going to look at the tortoise more than the bike. Anyway, I'm going to get rid of the mask on there so we can get back to this bike. And I'm going to do the arm. That's the nice thing about this masking thing. I can do any shape I want it. So I can select that, for instance. Mask it. In case it gets, gets most of it out of the way. Right, and I'm going to re-select the bike. I'll finish this arm and then I'll do the rest of it later uh, when the video is not playing. So I can actually get it done quicker so we don't spend too much time. And I'll show you how to do some chrome when I come back. And you notice here, basically it comes round here. And it's much smoother the transition there it's because of the way the lighting is and so okay there is a little bit there for instance that's actually solid so you could if you wanted to build that in as a straighter line and it's the easiest way to do that just keep brushing over and over in the same place and it will eventually become straight and solid okay but you'll notice this section here is actually going underneath to this point and it's all dark okay like so and again we've got that problem with the picker again there you'll notice it's dark kind of like here and then it just blends away to nothing and so and it's actually dark on the opposite side there we also have to account that there's a kind of enormous enormous <laughs> there's a toy toy sitting on top of this I won't call it enormous, you'll probably get offended. Okay, but there's a toy toy sitting over on top of this. So you have to make sure that if there's any kind of interaction with lighting that it's accounted for. We'll, we'll look at this in a minute, see if there was any issues. I'm going to do, you see this dark here, actually That dark here as well, so I'm going to make sure that blends. And same here, the bottom part of it. And that's dark as well. Like so. I think it's very hard to see the difference there, but you'll notice now I've done that, there's a, a very light edge to this, which comes down past there, so you can see the break. And what we need to do now is pick that light colour, I don't think it is, no, it is actually, it's the same. There's a little bit of pink in it, you can just see it. I don't know where you can see it on the video, but there is a little bit of pink in that. Okay, but this bit's a bit darker. Like so. And then I'm just going to, and there's, there is lots of dark here, but this is where the saddle goes. I wish that problem goes away. But my saddle's in a different place, okay? So I've got to bit make sure that I don't literally copy where their saddle shadow is because it's going to look silly. So I've got to put my pencil on and his saddle's there. You can't see that stem because it's just where the leg is. 
So I'm going to start that shadow where this the, the seat is, just about here. And then go down there, like so. You, you do notice it actually going into that part. Okay, but again, sampling important. There is a, a lighter edge to the top part of that. It probably does go into a little bit of white as well. You can't see because obviously it's against a white background. So what we're going to have to do there is to put some white in. I'm doing that as well, I should say. I'm adding the white on the edge. It may not appear against this white, whitish grey uh, background. But the thing is, there is talks that we're going to be basically having two versions of this. Uh, one's against a coloured background, which will be in the book and on the page, and then there's this one with a white background. So it's important to make sure when, if there is some uh, need for white highlight that you add it, because then it's going to look right when you give it some kind of colour background. Okay, I'm going to just put a little bit of kind of orangey colour. Like that. Uh, that's where the bend of the this tube going through is, but there's nothing stopping you actually adding your own. Actually, there might even be a bit of highlighting like that. Now the biggest thing about this metal, metallic uh, effect is that this is this enormous flash of highlight which is from the studio light that they've used uh, on the top and that's going to give it the kind of the shiny metal look when you've done it like so And you can just see that it's actually clipping onto the weld section of the bike. Okay, so that's that bit done. What I'm going to do is there is an extreme piece of white in this as well. And there's also a bit of pink. Oh, is that probably going on? There. Okay. And that's, I can't do that shadow because the bolt is where the leg is, uh, which is a shame. But that section of the bike is now relatively complete as a metallic looking bike. Obviously when I've done the rest of it it's going to make you look even more and I will do exactly the same process with the logo just there later. So when I come back all the red section will be complete and we'll then move on to doing some of this chromey. Okay. Okay so what I've done a little bit extra. I've basically done this stem, well two stems, this big stem here which goes into the main part of the back end and I started doing the actual back end part but I'll finish that later on because it was quite complicated and I want to move on and show you some other things I'm doing. If we put up the picture again, what I want to concentrate on now is to show you quickly how to do the tyre and then we'll move on to <coughs> excuse me and we'll move on to the actual relatively hard bit which is the uh, chroming effect. Now the tyre is like a white wall uh, so we've got to split it into bits 
because it's going in between, I'm going to put it behind and I'm going to switch that off because it's just one solid colour at the moment. So all we need to do is concentrate on, make sure that's 100%. Concentrate on getting it up to that edge. You see it's created a problem already because I painted over a bit. I can delete that, don't worry. I want to correct the shape as I paint here as well because the pencil line is a little bit too wobbly at that point so I'm going to cut in slightly to it there like so we don't need to paint that bit because it's that beigey colour like so While I'm here, I'm going to delete that little bit. So zoom in, get the eraser tool. <laughs> Make sure you select the right part of the image to delete. So, okay, I'm going to repaint that bit because I made a fluff. Oh yeah, you can actually trim some of this up to make it look a little bit neater as well. Okay, go back to that brush go underneath again. We're going to patch that little bit in. Right. You can paint in two different ways. You can zoom in like I have there and paint slowly around. See, there's a bump there, so I've got to correct that, or you could zoom out. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day this is blocking in. It's only when you do the detail stuff you have to consider which option you do. So you don't uh, make over... You see if I paint that quite... You, see, you can see the brush marks and if you do it zoomed out you don't see that when you're painting. Because obviously this, even the screens are 5K. It still doesn't show you everything that's being painted. So what will happen is you'll end up thinking you're painting it nice and smooth and then you'll get this really rough edge when you zoom in. So certain parts you have to do close and certain parts you can do zoomed out. One of the things you can do when you zoomed out is obviously blocking in. Notice I go over the same section quite a lot because even though I'm relatively close in I still need to sharpen that edge up as much as I can. Saying that you don't need a hyper sharp edge because it doesn't work like that in nature the kind of the way that light bends around objects means it softens edges so you never really see a totally sharp edge on anything this is why sometimes when people do certain digital well art and they give it a sharp edge it doesn't look totally right because you don't get what you need to do is to observe nature or what's around you and see how it works and then try to replicate it not say oh this is the nature of a building so it's got to have a sharp edge because it's man-made because the buildings tend not to have sharp edges they have dense badly made whatever and so there's always going to be some kind of distortion in the actual geometric shaping of any kind of man-made object and you never see straight up lines in nature anyway it's only a man-made thing so anyway what you do is just slowly talk away while you're painting some really boring bits like so you may notice while I'm painting this actually there is a little bit of a chroming effect on that nut that's on the stem of the front wheel saying that that's not really complicated to do it's it's very simple one thing you have to learn about chroming or metal work is that there's a slight rule of having dark next to light you notice that there's a highlight there and then there's two dark bits if you do that 
most of the time your metal work, even if you don't use any reference, will look relatively good, especially if it's chrome work. There's another rule to chroming, which is that there's a, a middle section which is like the horizon, which is darkened, and then you do extreme highlight at the top and medium highlight below, and that tends to give a nice chroming effect as well. I can't really show you examples while I'm painting because I've got a few, but I'm trying to think if I've got any other more pictures that you could look at. I did a chroming effect on uh, Don Quixote one, which I'm quite pleased with. It's not reference uh, chroming, it's actually, I looked at a picture of roughly how chrome works and then I created it myself but it still came out relatively good and it's using that effect I told you which is the strong highlight above unless obviously it's concave and then it's strong highlight below there's all the things you have to learn and this is where observation comes in find things around you or find things on Google images which uh, allow you to see how things operate it's not cheating, it's referencing, it's just like an observation. If you went out and looked at the, for instance, a chrome wheel hub of a Chrysler car, it's the same as looking at a picture of it on Google Images. You know, doesn't mean you, know, you would never ever encounter one of these cars in real life and so you're cheating. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier when you're actually doing their work. Because, for instance, as I said, this takes me, and if I'm doing this as a commission, most clients want it quickly, so going out looking for reference objects can be time consuming. So, what you need to learn to do is to obviously find ways to speed that process up. One of them is to use reference images around you. You, you could take lots of pictures when you're out with a camera, it doesn't matter how good the camera is. Sometimes I ask my daughter to stand and pose with her arms to get postures right and things like that. But on the whole, you know, the internet's full of wonderful reference pictures. As long as you don't copy them exactly. Like for instance this bike, I'm using a reference picture but it's not drawing the bike in exactly the same position. It's use that model I found on 3D Studio, 3D Warehouse, sorry. And I'm using the actual way that the lighting works on the actual bike to make my version of the bike look nice. So that's called referencing. Anyway, nearly finished the tiny. I'm not saying it's going to be any easier when I've completed it. You'll notice, well, you may have noticed, you can't see it now, but the reference picture had a, that's why I called it a white wall. It's not just this part that's a strange colour, the hub area. But it was actually the same colour going around in a circle on the tyre itself as well. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, I'm hoping to save up for a, what's known as a Wacom Chint which is a screen you can draw on. Uh, that one you can actually turn and rotate the actual artwork even though the orientation of the pen stays the same which means you can actually do odd angles and things like that without creating a problem. Whereas here, I'm actually going against the natural angle of my arm, which is creating a bit of a frustration because you've got to then try to create a perfect curve, which is not always possible. Okay, so that's why it takes longer. And this is why I want to buy this piece of equipment so I can speed the process up. Okay, there's a tyre in. You may find that there's a few bumps you don't like. Maybe that's because you can see the pencil work as well. Now, let's get the 
reference image again. Okay, I'm going to select it. So we can actually do that thing where I go over the edges. Now you see it's got lots of ribbing. There's not that much in the way of change in the colour. You may see that you see there's a very slight change there, which I'm going to bring in. It all makes a difference. You'll see on some of the other ones I've done for Steve that the tyres look nice because you know you've taken that effort to see the slight differences. And again, you see there there's a band where the thing comes down, but my light is coming at a different angle, so I've got to try to accommodate for that. Right, so, and there is also the starting of a very fine black line going there. So, what we're going to try and do as well is to see if it looks light at that time. Okay, so we're going to do that. I think that even goes around there and I don't have to worry too much about this area, I'm just going to worry about the area inside because this is going to be where that white walling effect is going to be. Now underneath here there's going to be some change in the lighting because obviously the light bashing down on it. Saying that I didn't do that much so it's going to be obviously darker. And you see there's a darker section goes around here. So, and here there's a kind of a you can see the white rim there. So, I'm gonna do that slight black line, like so. Then, I believe this, this is going to be slightly darker as well. This is the problem when the colors that close to being black, is you don't know how much you can. Uh, blend it because you can't see what you're actually doing unless you zoom in. Right, so see that line needs to be a little bit thinner. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of artistic licensing, put my own highlight there. Now this black line as well appears just here. So what we're going to have to do is just do a very faint Line around there. Try and keep an eye on the time because I like watching the news. It's coming up to news time. Anyway, you also notice that kind of line there. This is where you've got to think about where this ribbon is going to be. If I try to judge it based on what I've got there visible. Let's see if I can do it around about there. See if that works when I do the other line. Okay, and it actually appears inside the Okay, like that. There's a few things I'm going to have to do when I do the after the banding. But generally, there's a highlight there which goes down into the base. Like so, and the main you see, there's got ribs, but what I want to do is do the whole colour. I can do the ribs separately in a minute. Like so. Sometimes you think that 
one of the objects you've got to paint is going to be more hard than the other, like, oh my god, if I draw this turtle, it's going to look really nice. Don't worry about the bike, it's just mechanically, it's not going to be too difficult. And you realise that when you get started, some some things about the excuse me, some things about the um, bike are more complicated and difficult than than painting the actual uh, toy toy switch. It's supposed to be the hard part. Saying that, I've enjoyed doing a lot of this. I just hope you've enjoyed watching it. And I hope it's revealed some things A, you may not know about doing artwork in Photoshop, and B, the way I operate and make these pictures the way they appear. Even with the trials and tribulations of using this Photoshop. Okay, now as I said, it's getting close to news time. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to, once I've done this part of the tire, that's a shadow from the thing coming in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video or pause it then come back after I've uh, watched the news and done a few other things and then what we'll do finally is show you how to do this nice uh, chromium effect on that bar thing okay seems like a plan I think I'm actually going over where the band is going anyway doesn't matter. Let's just do that line there. Let's see. What I need to do is figure out where this band is going to go so I can actually paint it in properly. I'm going to quickly grab that colour because I've done most of the correct approach on this side is I'm going to, you can see the line like I said there because I, I drew it in I didn't draw it in the other side I'll get rid of that picture for a second actually let's just look how close it no, gets quite close to the far edge because of the perspective okay so that's how it'll be now again there's a little bit of shading there because of the thing. And that's basically that part done. Not the tire, the not this part of the tire. Okay, when we'll come back I'll show you what else I've done. Now I've corrected certain things and then we'll get this piece of chroming done to make it look really nice and sexy okay okay so I've done the tire or the black part of the tire anyway uh, I'll do the rest when we're not actually in the video so what I want to do now is just show you how to do this sexy piece of chroming up here now it's on the same basic level as the tire which is underneath the bodywork uh, I'm going to put this up again so I can see it. Now you'll notice that the chroming has two fundamental colours, uh, the dark area and the light area. What I'm going to do is slip the lighter grey and I'm going to make a new layer just in case I mess everything up. And I'm going to quickly paint the lighter version in. Let's 
Alright. As you said before, there's three basic colours. There's the dark area, the highlight area and the mid. And what we're doing now is painting the mid tone. So. Okay, there's that. That's the front section done. I'll just close this off while I do the back. So I made a mistake there. That's, that's actually part of the bumper, and I thought it was that was part of the tyre. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is the thing about when you're painting. You can actually correct things. Okay, so we've got uh, the midsection colouring. Like so. Right, let's get this back up again. Now there's under colour, undercut. What I'm going to need to do is actually just quickly make a mask of the area so I can see it whilst I'm painting. So, make sure we get the right thing. Okay, now again I'm going to highlight it, I mean mask it so I can do whatever I want to without problems. And then I'm going to do the black underneath first. It's very untypical to have chroming underneath the I suppose it's a kid's toy, so it doesn't matter if they go and get it dirty on you. It's just going to be easy to wash. Okay, let's get rid of the. See, I've done right to the edge there. I want to touch it. It doesn't matter, I can do it right to the edge. What I can do, because what I've got here is a little bit of highlight, and I think. There will be some highlight on this edge as well, even though I can't see it on that picture. I'm going to have to do it all the way down. Okay, and let's get the pencil back in again. I think that's more white than the actual colour we've got. Let's see can't see the end part either so what we have to do is you notice there's a slight edge so we've got to be very careful and paint that edge down like so and then get this What I want to do is to keep a little bit looking there because that's where the white band is going to be and that's going to be hooking around to there like so and I need some intense black as well which comes down as a effect down there and you also notice there's a little bit of highlighting just here. Okay, now the other part of that is white. That's white as well. So, what we're going to do here is that's got to be white. And also, this big band, remember not to go over that grey thing we just did. Like so. Okay, now I'm going to just do a little bit of white here. Right, that's basically how the chroming effect will work. I'm going to do that all the way down to there. This is a nice thing about chroming as well because there's hard edges. It doesn't matter if I, you do what I just did with it, which is make a big mistake and accidentally 
go to the edge because what we can do is if I pull this you'll notice there's a, a line that goes there again you don't even know what this is it could be the outside it could be a studio it could be anything but it doesn't matter because it's so abstract that it could be as I said any location what we need to do is just try our best to make this look as chromey as possible instead of worrying too much about what the actual reflection is now if I had more time and it was a commission for instance and someone's paying me enough money for this I could actually reflect their ch chosen image into the metal if I wanted to. I've done it before on some pictures I've done uh, but because this is a quite a quick job and it's not necessarily important that you see what's in the reflection then I'm just going to follow the reference image like so reduce that white area a bit now you'll see this is an interesting thing about chroming even though that looks like it's all grey there's a flash of white going into there and as I said before, I made a little bit of a mistake there and I wanted to bring more white in there. Like so, it's inside that white I just did, there's also grey. This could be just minor things that are inside the field of the chroming, the reflection that you wouldn't really necessarily consider as being. important as a photograph okay so that's the uh, we'll get that colour there Let's put some into that bit a little bit into there and we have lift off what you should have there is a kind of relatively nice looking chroming effect. I'm just going to do that down a little bit. I'm just going to zoom out, switch that off and switch that off. And if you zoom in a little bit, you'll see there's quite a nice chrome effect on that tyre. I mean, hub, uh, rim or whatever it is. Mudguard, that's it, it's a mudguard. Now, from this distance I can't see it when I was doing it but I'm not happy with the uh, density of the grey on this part here so I'm going to select say that grey and I'm literally going to just soften that sorry harden that edge Then the, that looks more like an orangey kind of grey than a yellowy grey. Anyway, that's how it's going to look. What I want to do, actually, I'm going to put a marker with that edge. I'm going to put another connecting line there. Okay. So, okay, now I could show you how to do this other bit, but as I said, it's roughly the same effect. So, what I'll do is I'll leave it there. Uh, when I come back for the final, not the final, but the next video, what I'll have done is I'll, let's just open this, I'll, I'll have the logo on the side, I'll do all this chroming here, I'll do the handlebars and the grips and everything else basically on the bike will be finished and what we'll concentrate on then is to do the the main shell i'll show you how the main shell is done 
then the final video will be the final three feet. Okay, hope you enjoyed that and hope it was kind of productive. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video and uh, a complete bike.